Hey, what's going on YouTube? Uh, let's see, I'm having a little fun here with uh, organization. Uh, doing up some labels for uh, the electrolytic capacitors and I am putting them in bins and labeling them up. So yeah, fun on a Saturday night. Uh, it's a tedious process, but once all this stuff gets done, I can, I've already collapsed one of them down. I got another one to go here, but yeah, I was able to at least get these little carrying boxes and I can repurpose them to something, but uh, yeah, I'll be go ahead and fill all these up and show you what it looks like once I get done. But uh, yeah, wild Saturday nights. Yep, so that wild Saturday night, uh, of course, this whole thing is the uh, electrolytic uh, caps. And down here, of course, is some cap kits that I have for radios uh, that I need to go through that I probably even even put on the channel. Uh, but stuck in a ton of projects, but I need to have this all complete uh, to get my mind right. And, uh, of course, this is all the resistors. These are doubled up here in the back. Um, they are divided uh, right there. But got all that done so far. Still have some empty ones here. These are um, a quarter watt, so I may put the uh, higher wattage ones down here. We'll see. But uh, I got two more of these, uh, these bins here. So, uh, fill that up. I got some other uh, parts that need to get done. But it was good to be able to actually lay this out. Actually seeing this uh, shows a little bit more organization than I've had before, which is just in that bin down there. It was just random boxes here. And then uh, over here, of course, there's random stuff everywhere. But, uh, yeah, so this is all getting done uh so that's done at least. So yeah, this is basically a bits and pieces video of uh, stuff I need to get around the shack uh, done. Uh, I've been stuck doing a whole bunch of other junk. And I want to talk about this. And you can see I got it in and out on my CMU 200. And it's going AF end and then into AUX 2. Um, I'm going to go over that next. But as you can see, I've actually cleaned up a whole bunch of stuff out of it. Uh, out of the way so I can get inside here uh, I'll show you something real quick a lot of people probably already know this if they have these units already but if you buy this module the way I did just give you a quick heads up so I'm gonna be back in just a minute well as you can tell we're into the uh, road Schwartz CMU 200 here and <laughs> explaining this uh, the way I have this set up you'll kind of understand in just a moment so I bought the uh, right here in this side is the B41 module you can tell um, this thing is laid out really well um, so these are these two modules here and then of course underneath the case uh, that shows you know that that's the B41 module um, right there so they all connect inside here but you'll see this one here and then this one here and the reason that is is basically going in and out to loop because I installed the module went through the whole procedure of doing the update on this of course on this side it's uh, uh, all the other modules you can have installed but I did the uh, software update on this but the uh, B41 wasn't showing up which is the audio uh, measurement unit and the reason that is is because of this uh, pigtail if your module which this is going to be very rare and mostly just for my memorization anyone else that's got a scrap module because these modules go for crazy amounts of money but yeah if you don't have the b41 you can tell you can tell the other modules here um, in place um, but even if you do have that B41 module, you install it, which is pretty cool because you can uninstall this little bar right here to be able to get to it. But that's also that bar to be able to pull out the different modules. But they're all dropped in modules, but interconnected with this uh, 316 coax. So I'm going to go ahead and take this 
and put everything back to normal as you can see it does great as far as labeling what every what every device uh, wire does and what port it goes to so I just used two of those together and of course a lot of a lot of extra um, coax to test this but I'm gonna go ahead and, and put these back to normal and <laughs> do uh, a little more rigging up because you as you can tell there is a splice right there but yeah this I used is the uh, MCXX cable um, that I had to put on these ends and uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that in between here and here and then rework these devices because I don't like how I put that bent in there anyway but as soon as I put all that back to normal and hide this wiring uh, these ports will go back to uh, use as normal uh, but I uh, want to throw a shout out to uh, Radio Garage and uh, he uses a CMU 200 kind of got me into doing this and uh, after you do the software updates which you can get there's a ton of these out there now um, and you can get the software, but once you get the three beeps, you hit, um, you, you hit your menu button there. It'll bring up the screen for, for you to uh, do firmware update after a soft, uh, after a board change, and it'll run through everything. And this actually has the new firmware, and uh, it actually has a SATA drive built into this one here, which is really cool. It hasn't been. Uh, um, this unit's not that old at all, actually, to be surprised. Um, everything's there, but I, I'll it's still update to an SSD drive. But I'm going to go ahead and get this cable installed, show you the screen afterwards. Uh, but, yeah, bits and pieces today. Well, I have that uh, wire changed out now uh, between the modules and reinstated all the... Um, the uh, module uh, ports here, which is the aux one, aux two. Uh, I can get rid of this now because that black wire you saw. We'll replace that. AF in, uh, AF out. Um, so that's basically these uh, wires that I repurposed originally. So now that goes from X one hundred five um, on this module here. And uh, you have that on this beautiful diagram. That's why I really enjoy having this type of test equipment. Everything is laid out nicely. It shows you the, uh, the different uh, ports right there and the wiring diagram on both sides. But the interconnection right there is the uh, uh, X105 to X119, which is replicated here in this uh, actual physical connection here with this uh, wiring I put in but yeah without this uh, wire right here which my module here the uh, B41 didn't come with you will not uh, it, it will not show up in the software um, regardless uh, so when you take this off to install this B41 uh, which that's that module right here beautiful diagram I love it look at the whole the whole thing it even goes back a little bit further but we don't need to get into it there's the other modules that are underneath this case right here but uh, these two is what we're dealing with and uh, this is actually the device that you can pull out the modules with so you take this device off to put in this b41 but if you need to pull it out disconnect this device and it is in a socket inside there but it still doesn't matter it will not show up on your display so I have this now finally ready and uh, yeah I apologize um, for these uh, it's kind of boring but I need to get all these bits and pieces uh, tied up and then get to these kind of fun radios here and you know those radios down here and you know there's a whole bunch of other stuff I need to get to and there's a random monitor with, but uh, with <laughs> there's radio over here there's stuff everywhere but uh, getting little by little everything on order but having those drawers in order make everything a little bit easier but uh shout out to radio garage for the uh semi 200 um you know he uses that as well in his so it's nice to be able to use some test equipment that's uh getting used uh in videos for same applications you know clean up radio equipment it's very nice and good to see so uh 
let me make sure this thing works and then these ports will be back to normal. And one less thing I have to deal with in the bench and check it off. So apologize if it's a little bit boring, but it all needs to get done. So hey Cairo. Anyway, we're back here with our features here, and now we have a, uh, if we go to our basics, sorry, now we have our audio, so, yep, just uh, visualize that again, so we have that pre-made uh, wire, and going around to that now, so go ahead and button this up. All right, well, I guess the final video uh, of stuff we're buttoning up with here is we got a uh, GPS discipline oscillator. Uh, it's the BG7 uh, TBL unit. That'll give us our uh, 10 mag uh, output reference. Um, we do have the B11 module um, installed in this, but we're gonna go ahead and set it up for that. And the oscilloscope and everything else that we have here, so we have a good GPS reference. Um, so yeah, we had the BNC out, and then we have the uh, one pulse per second output if we needed that. Um, as you see, everything's kind of running good here. We have GPS lock on that, uh, and then it's running, and it's blinking. Uh, no alarms. Um, also have RS-232, um, so we can go ahead and go over to the uh, host computer here. This kind of just runs all the programs for... Uh, 7300 and everything else is just a separate baby computer that I had I wanted to reuse so uh, yeah it's running through getting the serial uh, connection and then uh, yeah so there is the uh, the G uh, GPS here and all the lock spots that this thing is running on uh, but yeah it's doing a 10 megahertz uh, reference oscillator so it's great to uh, have this uh, we need to have a disciplined oscillator in test equipment, and this kind of shows where it's uh, where it's at, and it keeps updating and uh, pretty cool stuff. But uh, yeah, so we'll add that into the uh, bench equipment and get everything on the uh, on the uh, oscillating reference uh, point ten megahertz. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty cool new device here, and uh, kind of what. Uh, what locations it's uh, connected with on the GPS units here. Uh, so yeah, it's going through all that right there. And um, we'll come back to this again in the future after we get some other stuff uh, on the bench. But yeah, we have our other uh, radio stuff here. Uh, all the radio programs for programming stuff here, uh, like Kenwood and stuff down here, uh, ICOM, and uh, you know all the different uh, revisions and strikers and stuff but uh, yeah this is just my own separate computer here that I have running um, just off of the side here this is running through a remote connection so yeah it's always good I just keep this as a host that will end up running the uh, the icon on the remote software in the background but uh, yeah I still think that's pretty cool um, we will see what's going on and how many locks it actually has uh, GPS wise but uh, yeah, that oven's working real well in this unit, so uh, it's always a good unit to have on your on your bench and be able to test and get everything up to snuff. Make sure everything is uh, you have an actual reference point to use. The GPS antenna goes outside or you know close to a window even, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what we get. But uh, all right, well I'll say seventy three is. Uh, thanks if you made it this far along in the video and. Uh, We'll have something more exciting uh, down the road. Uh, yeah, due to weather changes, I haven't been uh, feeling totally uh, up to doing a whole bunch of stuff, but uh, at least I was able to clean up the shack. So I appreciate each and every one of you, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Uh, give me a throw the likes up, and uh, hey, let your friends know about me. I'll talk to you in the next one. 73.